From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 9 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. Election Day 2020 is nearly here. And amid historic turnout numbers, both presidential candidates spent the day making their final pitch to swing state voters with a particular emphasis on Pennsylvania. Natalie Brand reports from Washington. With Election Day just hours away, President Trump and Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden are still out on the campaign trail. Tomorrow, we can end the presidency that has divided this nation. On Monday, the two candidates fanned across five battleground states. The president hit four states with five rallies. Tomorrow, we are going to win this state. And we are going to win four more years in the White House. Joe Biden began the day with an unexpected stop in Cleveland. Before moving on to Pennsylvania, he was joined by Lady Gaga in Pittsburgh. Folks, I have a feeling we're coming together for a big win tomorrow. President Trump also stopped in the Keystone State. While in Scranton, Joe Biden's birthplace, he acknowledged that he's trailing Biden in several polls. I have foreign leaders calling me saying, are they serious? I say, <laughs> one of them calls said, I see that you're down a little bit in a poll. I said, can you believe this could happen to me? President Trump denied a report that said he plans to declare victory if he's ahead on election night, but the president also hinted at a legal fight. On Twitter, the president referenced a recent ruling by the Supreme Court on counting mail-in ballots in Pennsylvania, claiming without evidence it will allow unchecked cheating and saying it will induce violence in the streets. Biden's running mate, Senator Kamala Harris, accused the president of trying to undermine Pennsylvania voters' confidence. That he's doing it to distract from the fact that he actually has no record to run on. More than 97 million Americans have already voted. That's the biggest ever early vote total and nearly two-thirds of all the ballots that were cast in 2016. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. Well, Twitter flagged President Trump's tweet about Pennsylvania's mail-in ballots, adding a note that said its content, quote, might be misleading. Before noon today, Montana voters broke the state record for total votes cast in a statewide Montana election. That number is now more than half a million. MTN chief political reporter Mike Dennison tells us more about the size of this record and what it could mean for the final outcome. As of this morning, more than 517,000 Montanans had already turned in their ballot, either by mail or in person. That surpasses the old record by about 500. So, how high will the voter turnout go? I spoke with one campaign today who said they're estimating we could have as many as 600,000 ballots cast by Tuesday night. If that's true, that's an official turnout of more than 80%. Another intriguing twist, of the people who voted so far, 15% appear to be new voters, because they didn't vote in the previous three federal general elections. So the question becomes, who are these new voters and who are they voting for? Montana State University political scientist David Parker says it could cut two ways. And one way benefits Democrats, the other Republicans. So if you're increasing from 74% of the vote total to 80%, you're getting more independents out, for sure. So if it's younger independents, that really helps Democrats. Um, if it's just less educated voters, those about a college degree, um, and if they're not necessarily younger, but they might be a little older, that could help advantage Republicans. But he says the surge in new voters, more likely than not, is coming in Montana's urban and suburban areas, which could be a plus for Democrats. If this is a surge in places like Missoula, if it's a surge in places like Gallatin, Yellowstone, uh, and Lewis and Clark, um, then, then that really helps that helps Democrats. Also, who's still left to vote? Another big batch of ballots is likely arriving in the mail today or even tomorrow at county election offices. We also have 11 counties where polls will be open tomorrow with people voting in person. That's maybe 10,000 more votes. And thousands of people are expected to show up tomorrow at county election offices like this one behind me to drop off their ballot in person or register and vote. We don't know for sure which candidates will benefit from this huge turnout but we do know it will be one of the largest voter turnouts we've seen in Montana in a very long time. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. All right, polls open again across the state at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning for same-day registration and voting. On the local front, spending on Montana's U.S. Senate race broke records for a state campaign more than a month ago. Now, 
It surpassed a stunning $160 million by both the candidates, nearly 60 outside groups pitching in on that. Steve Bullock has raised an astonishing $43 million in just seven months, while the Danes campaign has taken in $27 million. Uh, Bullock and Baines, uh, Danes are getting millions of dollars from donors all across the country. Most polls have shown that race to be extremely close with no clear favorite. Officials in Yellowstone County started counting ballots on uh, Thursday and picked back up at 7 a.m. today after the weekend. The county's already at a 77% turnout as of this evening. Kitu's Mitch Lagge joins us now with more on how the turnout has been uh, so far and what you need to know if you still need to cast a ballot. Inside the Montana Pavilion on the Metro Park campus in Billings, Yellowstone County voters are rushing to the polls to make their voices heard in the 2020 election. Yellowstone County has already smashed its previous voter turnout record, bringing in more than 76,000 votes as of Monday afternoon. If you haven't dropped off your ballot yet, it's too late to get it into the mail. You'll have to bring it down to a polling place in person. Compared to the 2016 presidential election, Yellowstone County has 5,000 more votes cast in 2020 as of the Monday afternoon count. If you still have your ballot, do not put it in the mail. You'll have to bring your signed and filled out ballot to one of the polling locations at either the Metra or Yellowstone County Courthouse for it to be counted. On election day, an additional 10 drop-off locations in Yellowstone County will open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. At the locations you see on your screen, you can only drop off a ballot. If you are still trying to register to vote, that can only be done at the Montana Pavilion on election day. Lines are expected to be long, so be prepared to wait in line if you still need to register to vote. Metro Park also has a drive through ballot drop-off location in the paid parking lot north of the Montana Pavilion. You can vote without leaving your vehicle. The county elections administrator said today that there weren't many ballots arriving in the mail, which is a good sign that people are following instructions. The mail was very light today, which is very encouraging because people are heeding our warning to actually drop off their ballots. But we've had a lot of people drop off at the courthouse, and it sounds like it's been pretty busy here too, which is good. We already broke the record. Uh, on Saturday, we were over 75,000 ballots cast. So the more the merrier, let's just see how far we can go. I'll be stationed here at the Montana Pavilion watching those election results roll in. To keep up with the latest, stick with Q2 News on election night. Reporting in Billings, Mitch Laggy, MTN News. All right, thanks, Mitch, and the entire MTN crew will bring you statewide coverage from the big races tomorrow night. Congressman Greg Gianforte's political director for his campaign for governor has been fired after a Bozeman Police Department report shows he allegedly used his car to damage another car that was parked next to him. MTN's Gabby Krevet has the story. This is not the way we behave. This is not the way Montana you know, behaves. It's just not our values and it doesn't represent our values. A Bozeman Police Department crash name exchange report shows Congressman Gianforte's political director for his campaign for governor, Daniel Duffy, was involved in what was originally reported as a traffic crime. We received a report last Wednesday, uh, the 28th, of an incident that had taken place two days prior to that. Uh, when it was put in the system, it was termed as a traffic crime, and essentially we were told that there was damage to one vehicle caused by another vehicle or the driver of that vehicle. The report said the incident occurred in the Cannery District in Bozeman. Duffy opened his car door and repeatedly struck the car parked next to him with his door, causing visible damage. Jim Klingeman said Duffy damaged his daughter's car. And we've all been on the road or in a parking lot and, and gotten angry, uh, but, you know, you... you uh, you look to your better angels, I think is what they say. Bozeman's interim police chief said originally both parties said they would agree to work things out without pressing charges. But in an interview on Monday morning, the family whose car was damaged said it was not a matter of politics. They wanted to press charges because of what they called Duffy's deliberate actions. No citations were written, no arrests were made, and no charges were filed initially because the two parties wanted to work it out between them, and that's very common. Uh, in these types of incidents, sometimes that changes. In this case, I don't know why it changed. I don't know what led to a change in the course of the investigation, but because it has, has changed now, then the officer has to put together the case 
and file it with the attorney's office. Klingeman said Duffy's behavior was unbecoming of a public servant. You know, he, he, is, he is absolutely wrong. He should not be involved in public service at all, in my opinion. In a statement from Gianforte's campaign, a spokesperson said, quote, as soon as we first learned of this, Mr. Duffy was terminated and is no longer with the campaign. Reporting in Bozeman, Gabby Krevett, MTN News. The Q2 and the MTN network of stations will provide a full night of local and national election results and coverage on several media platforms. First on Q2, we'll begin our local coverage at 4 o'clock with a special election night newscast. At 4.30, CBS will take over national coverage. Then at 5.30 tomorrow, we begin our statewide MTN team election coverage. We'll hear from our MTN veteran political reporters. Jay Cohn and Mike Dennison will also touch base with several reporters positioned at campaign headquarters around the state and will weigh in with political analysts Ashley Strong and Eric Stern who will offer their views on how the races are unfolding. Results include a steady diet of contest scrolling on the bottom and side of your screen. We expect to be on the air online, on social media, on all streaming channels uh, well into Wednesday probably. So stay with us to watch the election unfold tomorrow. Montana surpasses 400 COVID-19 related deaths today as counties report 11 more victims. Six of those deaths were reported since noon. The deaths include three victims in Butte Silver Bow, two victims in each Yellowstone, Toole and Missoula counties, and one death in each of Marr and Lake counties. The state today also reporting a total of 757 new confirmed COVID cases. There are nearly 11,000 active cases across the state. Well, as voters lined up at the Metro Park Pavilion, demolition of the Metro Park grandstands continued outside this morning. Today, both sides of the roof came down and the entire process, according to Metro Park Marketing Sales Director Ray Massey, is now around 60 to 65 percent complete. Workers continue to work Monday through Friday, but they have no end date set as much of that work is weather permitting. Well, still ahead on the MTN 9 o'clock news here on the CW, the struggle to pay rent during the pandemic continues as many now face eviction. We'll bring you a closer look at the issue that many Americans are facing and some advice if you need help. But first, Bob McGuire's in next with your full seven-day forecast. We'll be right back.